okay whatever the services you are using ftp ssh telnet they are also working based on these uh, protocols only right so i'll tell you how these things work is so actually the tcp use a three way handshake so imagine this is the tcp okay so to send the data first tcp what it will do is it will go for connection establishment it will do the connection establishment means it is not sending the data directly here first it will try to connect with the destination means the the receiver you're getting my point first it will try to connect with the person so to check whether the person is there or not it use a process called three way handshake three way handshake so how many of you heard this term called three way handshake before anyone have you heard about this term three way handshake so even uh, what this three way handshake do is uh, I'll, I'll show you an example for you in real time also we use three way handshake remember whatever the topics we are discussing right now in osi we are going to see them in practical in practical once we start with the ethical hacking definitely you are going to do all these things in practical so better try to remember all this concept please note down the notes take a note okay this is what a three way handshake scenario so here you can see imagine there is a bill and there is a sheila a two persons they wants to communicate so this is a tcp session establishment scenario means as i told you first tcp will try to establish the session or connection okay so how it is establishing the connection in the sense with the help of three way handshake so what is this three way handshake in the sense where tcp has complete six flags six tcp flags we have okay so what are the six tcp flags again uh, i'll show you so these are the six tcp flags so one is sync which is nothing but the synchronization acknowledgement which acknowledges the recip recipient of the packet and push which sends all the buffer data immediately urgent take the priority one as the first and then it sends the data and fin once the process is done it will try to terminate the terminate means complete termination of the connection and rst is nothing but the reset of the connection total we have a six tcp flags here so these tcp flags will try to process your data will process your data or to establish the connection so here can you see the syn synchronization so what synchronization is doing it will try to initiate the connection between the host means i want to send the data now for example i want to send the data to shake first i will check whether the shake is live or not i'll check whether the shake is there or not or whether the system is live or not i'll do that so to do that activity i'm sending a packet called syn so i'm saying that i would like to talk to you with you shake on port 21 are you open that is what i send as a request now if the person is available and if he is listening to my request definitely he'll give the reply right as yes or no right so if the person is live and if he is listening to my request definitely he'll give the reply same here also i send a request the person is live and he also given a re reply saying that yes okay let's talk bill i'm open on port number means he she is giving like sin plus ac so first i send a sin request and in response i'm getting this act then okay i'll connect with you shake on this port that is what acknowledgement so this is what proper three way handshake so what is the use of this three way handshake connection establishment you're getting my point what is the use of this three way handshake it will establish the connection so now you got to know the target is live now you'll start sending me that got my point now you start sending the data so first it will try to establish the connection once the connection is established using the three way handshake then it start data transfer then it start 
data transfer once the data has been transferred then it will get the acknowledgement from the person whether he get the data or not then it will go for the rst or fin means it will terminate the connection so this is how the tcp works here so here it is not sending the data directly to the person first it is establishing the connection first it establishing the connection so once the connection is established then it start data transfer once data is the transfer it get the acknowledgement from the recipient then it will terminate or reset the connection that is why it is reliable so do you think is there any data loss in this process is there any data loss in this process if the person is not available it will tell you the person is not available so you won't transfer the data there means it gives an acknowledgement whether the person is there or not if there it will send if face any error again why it's face error that will also it will provide you got my point is that clear everyone why tcp is reliable guys are you there Is my audio clear for you guys? I'm audible to you. Just confirm it up. Yes, got it. So try to respond in between. Okay. So this is how the TCP. When it comes to the UDP, will it establish any connection here? Will UDP establish any connection? No, actually, it won't. It just send the data whether the person is not is there or not. It won't check. only do the data transfer and even it doesn't get any any acknowledgement there won't be any acknowledgement here so is there any udp flags we have is there any udp flags like how we have tcp flags to process the data do we have any udp flags actually no so don't be confused when you go for the interview if they ask tell me the udp flags tell them there won't be any udp flags so you can see only the tcp flags here you getting my point and what is the use of the tcp flags where it will process your data and establish the connections got it so this is how the tcp and udp works so tcp where it's a transmission control protocol the main advantage of this protocol is it gives the acknowledgement to the data when it comes to the user datagram protocol where it there won't be any acknowledgement here the data will be sent in datagrams here the data will be sent in packets right and remember the three way handshake so they will ask you what is the sequence of three way handshake we'll get an we'll get a question also in exam so just tell them go with sin first it will send the sin packet which is nothing but trying to initiate the connection once the target is live then you will get the response which is nothing but the sin plus acknowledgement and you will get the acknowledgement that i am connecting so this is what a proper three way handshake sequence got it so everyone remember the three way handshake sequence sin sinac and ack is the sequence so what is the use of this three way handshake connection establishment got it clear everyone the difference of tcp and udp so the transport layer use these two important protocols right so what are the responsibility of transport layer so end to end message delivery and it refers to this uh, sorry it is it is responsible to provide the acknowledgement of the successful data transmission and a retransmission of the data takes place whenever it found any error and apart from that it used two important protocols which is tcp and udp to process your data and next the functions what it is providing so before that here the data will be represented in segments so what is segments which is nothing but data units means the data will be converted into some bits of data this is your data right hello as we discussed in last session so each data will have the sequence number 
So here the data will be converted into some data units, which is nothing but segments. If you remember in previous layers, like uh, application, presentation, and session, there the data is representing as a data only. But when it comes to the transport layer, here the data is representing as segments. Means the data is divided into some bits of units. Got it? Is that clear? Right. And when it comes to the functions, so what are the functions or services the transport layer is providing? The first one is addressing. So it start addressing to the data. If you observe in previous layer, we don't have any addresses to the data. Have you seen any address like IP address, MAC address, anything in the in the top three layers? No, all right. But from transport layer, it start adding the address to the data that we call as a header. That is what we call as a header means along with your data, along with your data, it start adding the address also. So with the in the header. So what address we are adding in the transport layer is port addressing. Remember port address. So source port and destination port address is added in this layer only. Remember they'll ask you what are the addresses we add in transport layer. So tell them that we are adding a port address. You know ports, right? Total 65,535 ports we have. Right, so according to your transmission, the data will take the port address. So source port and destination port, which is nothing but the sender and receiver port. Got it? So remember, what addressing is adding in the transport layer? Port address. Remember that point, everyone. Okay. Next. Sequence control. So as I told you, we have the sequence. So whether the target receives all the sequence of data or not, it will check that. That will be monitored by sequence control. Then we have the flow control and error control. So what is the use of this flow control and error control? What flow control do? Monitoring the traffic, uh, not exactly anyone. For example, he is a sender and he is a receiver. Yeah, it controls the data flow. For example, receiver can receive only 10 MB per second. So what if I'm sending the 20 MB of data per second, will it able to handle that? Hmm? Will it able to handle that scenario? No, right? So only it will receive 10 MB and remaining 10 MB will be overflowed, right? So to overcome that scenario, it will check what is the range or the requirement of the receiver. Accordingly, it will send the data. So as Sheikh said, controls the flow of data by avoiding the Congestion. That is how this flow control do. So it maintained a constant data rates here between the sender and receiver. So accordingly, it will sense the data. That is what flow control do. And when it comes to the error control, finding the errors and start retransmitting that data. So it ensures a proper data transmission by adding these two controls. So that is what the services the transport layer is providing. First, adding the address means it also adds the source address, source port address, and source, sorry, destination port address in its header and forward the segment data to the network layer. Got it? So this is what happening in the transport layer. Clear everyone? The responsibilities and the services it is providing to the data. Is that clear, everyone? Any doubts? Any doubts related to the transport layer?
clear right as if you have any doubts you can ask me or related to the subject okay so now we'll move on to the next layer which is network layer so the segments will be forwarded to the network layer right so what is the responsibility of the network layer hmm? converting the segments into packets means here the data will be represented in packets in transport layer the data is representing in segments now the segments are converted to the packets and these packets will be routed to the destination right so it also take care of packet routing there is it it will look for the shortest path to transmit the packet from number of routes available for example you guys are traveling from from your location to somewhere imagine from your location to your bangalore will you reach bangalore directly no right will pass many different cities and you will reach the bangalore the city same here also your data won't travel directly to the server in between it use a many different networks and passes the data to the destination even you can check the uh, you know the concept called trace route trace route oh we think we use tracer in windows in linux it's trace route command so trace route oh, let me go with www dot a google dot com so if you observe this is the google server ip address okay so where my request went first first my request went to my gateway who is 0.1 here it's nothing but gateway okay it reaches to the gateway from there again there is another network which shows as a request a timeout why we are getting this star indication says one the target may be using firewall that is how it not disclosing any information and second thing is the network may not be available the network may not be available right now. so that's how it will check and reach the destination so to reach the destination so can you see uh, thought it went for my broadband which is nothing but my isp so first it went to the gateway from there to the isp from there to some other ip from there to another network another network like that it will reach the destination right so that's how it will reach the destination so first it went from can you see here 0.1 to server so how many networks it passed here in between so hops hops are nothing but here the distance between one network to another net so to reach the destination it reaches it uses nine different networks got my point so these networks are configured by this routing process only got it so the main responsibility of this uh, network layer is routing got it so it look for the shortest path to transmit the packet from the number of routes available right and next logical addressing to the data so what is logical addressing here ip address so now previously if you see in transport layer along with the data we have header right so what this header contain in transport layer source port address and destination port address right now when it comes to the network layer it will start adding the source ip address and destination ip address now the data knows where the data should be delivered so to identify each device on internet network uniquely the network layer defines an addressing schema so the sender ips and receiver's ip address are placed in the header by the network layer got it so that is what happened here so network layer is implemented by the networking devices such as your routers 
all right or nics so this is the things which we use network interface controls right so these are the some responsibilities of network layer so network layer works for the transmission of data from one host to the other located in different networks and it also take care of packet routing so there is a selection of the shortest path to transmit the packet right and it start adding the addresses to the header point where to recognize the device in the different locations got it is that clear everyone so this is what happening to the data in the network layer now from this network layer the data will be transmitted to the data link layer so what is happening to the data in data link layer node to node delivery the main responsibility of the data link layer is node to node delivery and here the packets will be converted into frames right so the main function of this layer is to make sure a data transfer is error free so error free from one node to the another right so when a packet arrives in a network it is responsibility of the data link layer to transmit it to the host using the physical address so in in data link oh sorry in network layer we use logical address here we are using the physical address which is nothing but mac address right so now along with the data in header it contains source port destination port address source ip destination ip address source mac address and destination mac address got it so the main responsibility of this layer is to make sure data transfer is error free from one node to the another all right and when a packet arrives in a network it is responsibility of the data link layer to transmit it to the host using its physical address which is nothing but the mac address got it so here also it use some services like a flow control to the node not to the network there we use the network here we for the node error control and access control to the data so you know error control and flow control when it comes to the access control so it helps to determine which device has control over the channel at the given time means to which devices will give the permissions to access that service so that will be taken in the access control only so only these devices will have the access and these devices doesn't have any access like that to configure them we use access control okay so these are the some services which you can see in the data link layer of osi model and here the data will be represented in frames means in transport layer segments the segments are converted into packets and that packets are converted into frames and now these frames are sent to the uh, next layer which is physical layer so here that frames are converted into a bits so what is bits here what is bits here zeros and ones access control is nothing but uh, for example here we have too many people right so in that to which person have to give the access to that particular service like that means controlling the access there authorization so there are hundreds of ips in my network so only few ips should give the access so at that time i'll write a rule here so to this person means 10.10.10.0.0.1 should be allowed or 10.1.1.1 should be denied so now according to this rule it will allow or deny the service or person so this is what access control got it so it's simply a determine which device has control to access that service or to access the device or to access the data that can be validated with the access control okay 
So coming back to the physical layer, a bits we have. Bits are nothing but zeros and ones, which is nothing but binary. So physical layer is the lowest layer of OSI model. So it is responsible for the actual physical connection. So it is responsible for a physical connections between the devices. Either the devices are connected to wide or wireless. Okay. So the physical layer contains the information in the form of a bits. And it is also responsible for transmitting individual bits. Transmitting the individual bits from one node to the next node. From one node to the next node. Okay. So the main responsibility is of the physical areas, physical connections between the devices, means how the devices are connected to each other, either in wide or wireless or through signal, whatever it may be, it should be responsible for that. And next is transmitting the individual bits from one node to the next node. So when receiving the data, this layer will get the signal received and convert it into zeros and ones and send them to the data link layer. So which will put them in the frames back to the together, right? And this layer is also, or use some functions like uh, a physical topology. You know, physical topologies, right? We discussed physical topologies. So, means which specifies how different the devices or nodes are arranged in a network. Means how the devices are connected in that network. That is what the physical topology represents, right? And it is also responsible for transmission modes, same. Dialog control did that. So how the data should be flow with the two different devices. So either it is in simplex, off duplex, or full duplex. That is what they have to take care. All right. So now tell me, uh, as as you know, application, and we have presentation, session layer. Transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer, right? And you know how they are communicating each other and what happening in each layer to the data. That is what we have seen till now, right? So as you know, the top three layers are software layers and the bottom three layers are hardware layers. And this is a core layer of OSM. Right? It means it's an interface between the software and the Hardware, you can say. So now, as you seen, the physical layer is nothing but the hardware, right? Hardware related. So, what kind of hardware devices we use in this layer? Anyone? You may get these kind of questions in interviews. What kind of hardware devices we use in this layer? Anyone? In network, at least in network, what kind of hardware devices we use? Okay, physical cables. Yeah. In network layer, just now we discuss routers. When it comes to the data link layer, ADC converter. Data link layer. Routers we want to use good. Routers are already used in network layer. Cables we use in physical layer. Ethernet. So actually switches. If you remember, switches will communicate based on IP address or MAC address. We discussed in topologies. MAC. So in which layer? of OSM model, the MAC address is added to the data. Data link only, right? So simply remember that process. Okay. 
So here rotor, switch, here you can use hubs or cables or NICs here also. Right. So remember, you may get these kind of questions also in interview, prepare for them. And I told you uh, to go through these protocols, like what protocols we use in each layer of OSM model. How many have you done with that? So what protocols we use in application layer, can anyone? What protocols we use in application layer? HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP, POP3, great. DNS, in which layer of OSM model the DNS will work? DNS protocol. In which layer of OSM model the DNS protocol will work? Transporter, no. Application only. Domain name resolution, not. Domain name system will work in application layer. What what protocols we use in presentation layer then? SSL, TLS, like secure communication protocols we use, and uh, image encoding like JPE, GPNG. Protocols, not algorithms, I'm asking. Encryption and decryption is a service. Like it's one of the function. I'm not asking about the functions here. I'm asking about the protocols which we use in presentation layer. So SSL and TLS you can take, which do encryption and decryption. And uh, MPH, like video encoding, image encoding, like these things, JP, GP, and G Mega, like these things you can use. And when it comes to the session layer, what protocols we use in session layer? NetBIOS, you can take an example, or a remote procedure calls, you can take an example. When it comes to the transport, as you know, TCP and UDP we are using. SIP you can take. And network layer, IP internet protocol we are using. OSPF, which is routing protocol we use, ICMP we use, right? And then when it comes to the data link layer, point to point connection or Wi Fi protocols or Ethernet. Right. And physical layer, cables actually. So it's related to the hardware. So RS232. To serial communication or Ethernet cable or J45 we used. So, like that, you can see these kind of protocols here. Right? So, try to go through that. So, what protocols we use in each layer of OSM model, or what devices we use in each layer of OSM model, and what are the vulnerabilities you can find in each layer of OSM model. As a reference, I have given a sample in last session, if you remember. So, one of our student did it as I have shown that for you. I'll do, I told you to go through that again in that way. And I don't know how many of you done with the task. So try to do the task and submit that assignment to the group. Okay. Got it. So once we're done with the data, physical layer, the data will be sent. Means this is completely on the center point of view. Whatever we discussed is completely on the center point of view. Once we send the data, that will be moved on to the of physical means the receiver will receive the data at the physical layer first, as we discussed. From sender point of view, it starts from application layer, and from receiver point of view, it starts from a physical layer. So the receiver is going to receive the data in physical layer in bits format, and these bits are converted into frames, and these frames are converted into packets and these packets are converted into segments in transport layer. These segments are converted into data and establish the connection. This data is decrypted, decompressed, all these things. And you're going to see the data in application layer. Means wherever you started and that is where it is ending also. So when I send a message uh, in WhatsApp, where you're receiving that message again, 
in WhatsApp only, right? Means in WhatsApp application only. So that is how the data will be transferred from one system to another. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, no, say something. Yes, yes. So that is all about the OSM model. So this is how the data travels from one system to another system using these layers, right? Then what is the difference between the OSI model and TCP IP model? Anyone? What is the difference between the OSI and TCP IP model? So, okay, OSI is a, a reference model and it comes to the TCP IP model, it is an implementation model. And here, It has seven layers where it has a four layers. So what are the four layers we have? Application, transport, internet, and network layer. So these are the four layers which you can see. So in this only, you can see the physical layer and data link layer. And this layer is nothing but the network layer. And this layer is a transport layer. And this layer has a compression of session and presentation. Got it? So that's what same. The functionality is the same, but it is practically implemented on the application itself. It's a kind of an, a, a compressed model. Okay. So the purpose of OSM model is uh, it's a, a computational framework for understanding the network communication, not a specific implementation. But when it comes to the TCP IP, it's a suite of protocols used for actual intercommunication. Okay. And OSI is not widely implemented due to its complexity, whereas TCP IP, the dominant model for the internet and most networks also. And functionality, if you take, OSI, each layer is well-defined and independent function. Independent functions. When it comes to the TCP IP, overlap between, means some functionalities overlap between the layers. Means transport layer handles both the connection management and error checking. So like that. Right. So it overlaps between the layers. And when it comes to the flexibility, it is easier to adapt to new technologies due to its modular design, which is OSI. And less flexible because protocols are more tied to specific implementation. That is what TCP IP is. Right? So primarily, OSI is used for academic and theoretical purpose. critical purpose and this is for development purpose. So use it for real world network communication and development. That is what TCP IP. So remaining will be the same. That is what you can see. So in practically we are using the TCP IP model only. It's just a reference model. If you want to show me, I'll show you that. So how many of you heard about this tool called Wireshark? So there is a tool called Wireshark where you can download from the Google and just go to the Google type Wireshark. You'll get a website called Wireshark.org or visit that and download for Windows and do normal installation. So this is a tool actually. Okay. So once you install this tool, 
here you can see some interfaces okay so now currently my network interface is wi-fi they'll ask you what is your network interface so don't be confused at that time interface is nothing but to which connection you have connected for so obviously i connected uh, to transmit by data I, I use a connection called network which is wi-fi so that is what nic so which is network interface controller so here i'm using that controller which is wi-fi so this is my network interface so you can see there is a traffic also and what is the use of this tool is it's a packet capturing tool packet capturing tool means whatever the packets i'm getting into my system and whatever the packets sending from my system that can be captured and monitored by using these tool you're getting my point so wireshark is a packet capturing tool okay so if you if you open this let me open my wi-fi so can you see there are packets going on in my system so this is my ip through my ip this is source this is destination and what protocol it is using what is the length of a packet and info and here you can see that four layers and transport layer and application layer so the four layers you can see here okay so let me take a protocol called http this is a filter tab here you need to filter what, what is the use of this filter is can you see how many packets it, it is going on Seven thousand packets here it is going means that is incoming and outgoing total packets we have is 8000 so in this if i want to check for a specific protocol is that possible for me by going and checking in this way a bit difficult right for me to find that particular packet so for that you can use a filter here http so when i type http and enter can you see it looks for only http protocol is there an http protocol here no now let me visit a site let me visit a http site so there is a http site called test php one web can you see when i visit that site automatically my wireshark is capturing 194 is my system and what is the destination test php can you see that right let me take a packet here so can you see and you can elaborate this packet and you can see what is the destination mac address what is the source mac address so who is the source and who is the destination here in this in this who is source and who is destination who is source and who is destination here source is my system destination is test to php website you're getting my point so when i do that request that request sent through the http protocol right so source is my system so this is my mac address my device mac address can you see and what is the destination mac address whose destination mac address is the test php web.com mac address whose mac address is this anyone text i didn't get you no it's my system see my system mac address is source it is intel 8 uh, this 90 78 uh, this is my intel okay means my system my my particular my system is msi that msi mac address but this is the tp link which is nothing but my gateway which is nothing but the router not php website uh, no you <laughs> like you won't see mac address will work within the network only again i'm telling you we discussed about switches routers and uh, hubs if you remember so at that time i told you mac address take won't take your data over the network mac address will work within the network only so you won't get the over the network devices mac address here you'll get the mac address of within the network so whenever you do any request to the, the target so if it is taking your mac address remember the mac address will work within the network so it won't take your mac address over the network which address will take over the network which address will take your data over the network ip address remember so remember 
your MAC address will work within the network only. So data link layer is responsible for node to node delivery. That means within the network only. If you want to take your data over the network, then it use a network layer. If you want to communicate within the network, then it is only by using the data link layer is enough. Got my point? So here you won't get the test php one web dot or any website's MAC address, you won't get that. It will get you only your gateway MAC address. Gateway is nothing but your router. My router is TP-Link. I'm using the TP-Link. Can you see? I'm getting the TP-Link here. And last two, three octets here. So it will show you only that particular device's MAC address. Okay, so it won't take your data over the network, which is MAC address. MAC address won't take your data. It will take up to your gateway only. So that is why here your source MAC is your system MAC address and destination MAC will be your gateway MAC address. Okay, now using the gateway, it use IP address and take your data over the network. Okay, and when it comes to the next layer, Ethernet protocol. So can you see the source? Someone connected. Okay. So can you see what is source IP? My IP. And what is the destination IP now? So to which one is taking your data over the network here? Which layer? Internet layer is taking your data over the network with the help of IP address, right? And can you see the transport layer, which is responsible for source port and destination port? So what is the source port? A random port address is added. But what is the destination? It requested for HTTP, right? To get the test, page, test PHP website, it used a protocol called HTTP. So what is the port number of HTTP? 80. Got it. And hyperlink, which is application layer. Here you are getting the website, the host information, complete the uh, Mozilla, which I'm using, Mozilla Firefox, that information I got as a user agent. And header, this is completely HTTP header. And response in frames and next response. So you can see. So can you see the complete data? Can you able to see the source port, destination port, source IP, destination IP, source MAC, destination MAC, and the header, the application, what it is handling, which site it is requesting, all this, right? So this is how your data will try in real time. So when you request any website that use this OS site, oh, sorry, the TCP IP model and forward your data. Got it? Is that clear, everyone? It's unknown. So just that is an example about why shark will discuss in detail. We have a sniffing concept. So this is completely OSA and TC by IP model. Okay. So next we have, is there any doubts related to the model? The OSA and TC by IP model, is there any doubts? If you have any doubts, you guys can ask. No? Shall I continue? All right. So next we'll move on to a topic called network addresses. So next we have network addresses. So in this network address, we are going to discuss about the physical address 
एंड लॉजिकल एड्रेस सो फिजिकल एड्रेस इज नथिंग बट हियर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मैक एड्रेसेस एंड आईपी एड्रेसेस right so let me go with the physical address first we'll discuss about physical address for today so what is this physical address actually and how it works and how many uh, physical addresses or mac addresses do we have anyone hmm? how many mac addresses we have from where we are getting this mac address and what is the use of this mac address anyone know about that how these things work mac address can be configured and it was randomized uh, no it is a unique it's a unique mac address it can't be a randomized here yeah during manufacturing you will get the mac address is physical and unique exactly so to communicate or to transfer the data from one computer to another computer what we need an address right so in computer networks there are various types of uh, addresses are introduced each works at different layers as you know so you know port address will work in transport layer mac address will work in the data link layer and ip address will work in the network layer right so a mac address is actually a hardware address we call it's an unique a unique 48 bit hardware numbers okay so how many mac addresses we have in our system and how will you check the mac address to check the ip address you know the command called ip config so you'll get the ip address but how will you check the mac address hmm. so you can go in two ways to check your ip mac address one is ip config space give a space there and slash all When you type this command, so what is your interface? Wi-Fi. So presently I connected to a Wi-Fi. So to this Wi-Fi, I am having a a physical address. Can you see this? Right. So this is my MAC address. So let me copy this my MAC address. This is my MAC address. Okay. So as I told you, it's a forty-eight bit. I told you. So here each block. we called as a octet so what is octet 8 so how many eights we have a 6 so what is the size of this 48 bits and in which format we have that hexa decimal so you know hexa decimal right 0 to 9 a to f total a 16 characters will be there So zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. Instead of ten, it will be A B C D E F. So like that, a zero two. It's a combination of alpha and numeric. So which we call as a hexadecimal. So can you see? It is a format of hexadecimal. Is that is that clear for you guys? What is the size of MAC address here? It's a forty-eight bits of size. Remember. and here the first 24 bits we called as oui and the next 24 bits we called as a nic okay so total how many mac addresses we have is for every interface we have a mac address example example if i want to send the data from my system to another system what i need what what i need what i need if i want to exchange or establish a connection 
what are the sources I have to exchange or to establish the connection? What are the sources I have in my system? Can I connect through a Wi-Fi or exchange my information? Can I? Can I do that using my Wi-Fi? Can I connect to that? Yes or no? If I want to send or connect with other device, what are the sources I have? Through Wi-Fi, can I connect and con communicate? I can, right? So at the time, for this network interface, you have a MAC address. And using Bluetooth, can I connect and communicate using Bluetooth? Can I? Through Bluetooth also, I can connect to you, right? And I can share my data. So can you see for Bluetooth? And is there any other option apart from these two? Through Wi-Fi, I can do. Through Bluetooth, I can do. Is there any other option in my device? Ethernet. Can you see the physical address? So now tell me, how many MAC addresses I have? How many MAC addresses I have? So the MAC addresses are allocated to the network interface controllers. So what are the network interfaces we have? Wi-Fi is one of the network interface. Bluetooth is one of the network interface. And Ethernet cable, the NIC cable you connect, right? That is also one of the network interface. Okay. And through IP config slash you can get or using the command called get MAC. Get MAC. By running this command also, you can get the MAC addresses. So just forgot about these, these four. These are uh, system generated MAC address. That means uh, uh, I'm using the VMware and virtual box. So for that, we, we have these MAC addresses. Just forgot about that. So we have only MAC address for these three. So one is media disconnected, which is nothing but Bluetooth. Can you see? This is the Bluetooth, actually media disconnected. I'm not using Bluetooth now. And another one is this one, which is nothing but Ethernet. So I'm not connected to my Ethernet. So which I have connected? Wi-Fi. So this is my Wi-Fi. So total we have three network interface controllers and three for these three network interface controllers, we have the MAC address. And these MAC addresses are assigned to the hardware chip. Like for example, uh, you can see there will be a Wi-Fi chips for the little PCs if you type. So this are uh, this some chipsets you can see. So which are configured to your motherboard. So they are configured to your motherboard because of this only you are getting these Wi-Fi's. So to this chip, it contains the MAC address. It contains the MAC address. Okay. So this MAC address is assigned by the manufacturer only. Remember. Okay, so like that there will be chips. These chips are assigned to your a system and it has a unique address that is MAC address. Okay, so that is how you're getting the MAC address actually. And the MAC address is divided into two categories. One is OUI, which is organizationally unique identifier, which is nothing but the manufacturer we call as a vendor. And these are the NSs like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. Okay, so from where we are getting this MAC address? As you said, manufacturer, right? So manufacturer means the vendor is giving that MAC address. Again, from where the men vendor is getting that MAC address? From where the vendor is getting the MAC address? Anyone? Uh, because there are different vendors, Dell we have MSI, Lenovo, HP. So for example, whatever the MAC address that Dell is using, 
how it knows to the Lenovo? What happened if the same thing the Lenovo is using, the same MAC address? How come it globally unique at the time? How come it globally unique at the time? Hmm? So actually, the vendor is getting the first 24 bits. So whatever you've seen, the first 24 bits the vendor is getting from I triple registry, sorry, registration authority committee. So the first 24 bits, which are nothing but the six digits, the first six digits are assigned by I triple registration authority committee. Are you getting my point? So the vendor will go to this community. So this committee and request for first 24 bits. So they will provide you the first 24 bits. For example, now my device, which is MSI, went to this IEEE and asked for the, I need uh, the MAC address. So they provide the first 24 bits, which is this. So now vendor will take this first 24 bits and add the remaining to the N96. This is added to the Bluetooth. This is added to the Wi-Fi. This is added to the Ethernet like that. Whatever the devices you have, we'll add it to that. So up to F. So as told you, it's an hexadecimal format. So from 0 to F only. So here the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And F, 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 F. These are the broadcasting MAC addresses. These are the broadcasting MAC addresses. Means these are not added to any device. Okay. So you're getting my point. The first 24 bits are OUI, which is organizational unique identifier, which is nothing but the manufacturer. And next 24 bits are NIC. So OUI is getting from IEEE. And now this OUI means the vendor will provide the next 24 bits. Got my point? So imagine he got that FF, FF, and FF he is done with the MAC addresses. Next, what you will do? Again, you'll go to the IEEE and ask for the first 24 bits. Now they will provide 90, 78, and 42. Just it changed one number here. And again, it start using this. So how many MAC addresses you can assign here? Any idea? By taking one OUI, by taking one OUI, the order means the six digits, how many MAC addresses you can assign? Can anyone tell me? Three, yeah. Uh, not three, man. What is the size of this uh, MAC address? What is the size of this MAC address? What is the size of NIC? 24, right? So just go and calculate what is 2 power 24. Just let me know. Not three or nine. Oh, not 48 bits, man. NIC, I'm asking. I told you, right? First 24 bits are OUI and next 24 bits are NIC. So what is the size of NIC? 24 bits, right? So then what is 2 power 24 at the time? It will be around 16 million. So just by taking, just by taking first 24 bits, how many MAC addresses you can assign? 16 million MAC addresses you can assign. Got it? So now imagine I'm a manufacturer, I'm a vendor, Dell vendor. So I'm manufacturing the devices. Okay, for that I need to uh, provide the MAC address to my network interfaces. So to provide that MAC addresses, what I'll do, I'll go to the Tripoli, I Tripoli committee. I'll ask them, man, just provide the MAC address. So they provided this MAC address to me. Just they given 24 bits. Now I'll start adding the remaining one, like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, like up to 0, F, again, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 
one f again two zero two three two four like that again it's complete ff i'll start zero one zero two zero three like that so up to here completely i'll use this block so this block you can ascend around 16 million mac addresses so once you're done with the 16 million again i'll go to the i triple again you'll provide me the first 24 bits 8d and a2 now a2 again i'll provide 16 million mac addresses so like that the mac addresses are assigned and it will be globally unique globally it's unique okay so this is how the mac address you're getting and mac addresses are assigned to the network interface controllers which is nothing but your wi-fi is one of the network interface your bluetooth is one of the network interface even the your ethernet is one of the network interface or even your nfc is also one of the network interface got it is that clear yes or no is that clear how you're getting the mac address and how many mac addresses you have whatever the interface communicate with other one then you can consider that as a network interface got it remember so even even uh, you have mobile devices right just go to your settings type mac address if you connected to the wi-fi just let me know your mac address of your mobile just tell me the mac address of your mobile any one of you just i need first 24 bits enough Anyone? Just go to your mobile uh, settings. and settings, just type uh, MAC address at the top. It will show you the device Wi-Fi MAC address or Bluetooth MAC address. Anyone? So I got one FC. So you're using Xiaomi. Can you say I got your company? OUI is nothing but vendor. So can you say I got your vendor information? So what is OUI here? It's an organizationally unique identifier. So it's 24 bit globally assigned to number. So OUI is assigned with the MA large is nothing but the large size, small size and medium size will be there. So when the date is created and can you see it started from a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, F, 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 F. I think it's made in China, right? And the comp, like, is that your device, right? Xiaomi. Right. So, have you observed one thing here? In your mobile, it is representing with the colon. And here it is representing with the iPhone. Have you observed the difference? How many of you observed that? In your device, in your mobile, it is representing with the colon, means each octet is separated with the colon. Here it is separated with the iPhone. And if you observe here, it is saying physical address, not Mac address. But in your mobile, it says as a Mac address. So here we call them as a notations. Okay, so here it is a iPhone hexadecimal notation. In your mobile, we call that as a colon. There is a colon hexadecimal notation. And there is a dots also. So what it represents is actually uh, most of the Linux devices. So here you can see the differentiation. Here it is in hexadecimal. This we called as a, a physical address, not MAC address. We, call, we won't call them as a MAC address here, the physical address. But because here it is representing with the iPhone. When it is colon based, we call that as a MAC address. So where you can see MAC address is mostly in Linux based operating systems. Like your mobile is a Linux based operating system. Or if you're using any Linux operating system, it will be represented in colon means just by seeing these notations, you can tell that what kind of OS it is using, means what kind of kernel version it is using. Right. And here you can see this dot, you can use them in the hardware address. Or, or we call this as a burnt burnt in address mostly you can see them in 
firewalls like hardware firewalls you can see hardware firewalls cisco or or office level routers they use these uh, hardware addresses so that's the difference actually got it right so a colon notation is used by the actually linux os or and predix or predix express notation is used by the cisco systems so just by knowing these notations you can tell the difference of the systems got it so what is the size of mac address what is the size of mac address 48 bits remember not bytes bits and what is the format of a mac address it's a hexadecimal format right got it so this is all about the a physical address so this is what we call as a mac address so mac address you are getting from the a manufacturer so the manufacturer is getting the first 24 bits from the ieee registration authority committee okay and next 24 bits was assigned by the oul so first oul get the 24 bits from the ieee and next oui will provide the nic that is how you are getting from manufacturer but actually you are getting from ieee got it is that clear everyone about the mac addresses yes no say something now you got an idea about from where we are getting this mac address and how many mac addresses we have any any doubts for you guys no so that is all about the a physical address so in next session we are going to discuss about the logical address which is nothing but ip address we'll discuss in next session so till then everyone just go through the osi model again in detail and just go through the protocols and port numbers again just recall whatever the protocols and port numbers i have given just go through that protocols and port numbers okay and then see what is physical address okay so uh, that's it for today so we'll stop it here itself okay so we'll continue the remaining part in next session so everyone just go through this part if you have any doubts you guys can ask me or else yeah you guys can leave thank you thank you for attending the session have a great day guys see you in next session that's a dns default ip uh, attendance uh, i think team will take care of that yeah spoofing mac address is possible but temporary not permanently we are not in whatsapp group some of them i think even i'm not there in whatsapp group the team will take care of that i'll i'll ask them i'll inform to the team uh, assignment is nothing but just go through the topics whatever we covered till now i make a document on that part what uh, we are not in whatsapp group some of them I'll, I'll inform to the team
So task I have given, right? Already I have given tasks like uh, go through all the topics. I told you make a document and you have to submit that in the group. That is what I told you actually. So I don't know how many have you done. Just go through that. All right then guys, see you, see you next time. So whoever not in the group, just join the group. Uh, link has shared in the chat box. And go with the feedback. Everybody.